Starfleet and the Federation really are in triage mode. Burnham goes rogue again, and Linus... <sighs> Jesus, Linus. Linus just can't get the hang of the personal transporters. Get ready for our review of Discovery Season 3, Episode 6, Scavengers. Now, if this is your first contact with us, welcome aboard. My name's Carl Bromley, and this is the Trekkie's Guide to the Galaxy. So, the episode opens with a couple of glory shots from the newly refitted USS Discovery, with her detached warp nacelles, cut-out sections from the pylons, and glowy blue bits. Gotta be honest, I'm not sure I like it. Maybe it'll grow on me. And as for Discovery's registry now having Dash A on it, there's only two other ships to my knowledge that have earned that distinction. One, of course, being the Enterprise, and the other, the newly revealed entry, Voyager. And as much as Discovery's had an overhaul, it's still the same ship, so I'm not convinced that they got that one right. Also, the fact that the ship has had this major overhaul also brings up some other interesting questions. But you'll have to wait till later in the week for that video, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications so that you don't miss out. We move into the command briefing room where we see just how badly on the back foot Starfleet really is. It's firefighting issues that, if they had full warp capabilities, probably wouldn't even be issues in the first place. And Admiral Vance is rightly keeping Discovery back to be used as rapid response. And, you know, I'm starting to warm to Vance. At first glance, he seems to be a bit cold and clinical. But actually, in the few moments we've seen him drop his shields, I think he's genuinely trying to do his absolute best to keep everything up and running. Back on Discovery, we get an introduction to some of the new tech that the ship's been fitted with that will allow the crew to get up to date with how the 32nd century operates. The com badges are my personal favourite piece of kit, with the projected personal display, built-in tricorder, personal transporter, and of course, it's a com badge. Whilst the crew are checking out their new stations, the ship receives a hail, which turns out to be Grudge the Cat. It transpires that during the year before Discovery's arrival, Burnham tracked down two Starfleet ship's black boxes, and Buck has found another. Unfortunately, he's been captured in the process of trying to obtain it for her. Burnham explains to Saru that with the information from it, they could prove that the burn had a point of origin, and they'd be able to triangulate it. This would of course allow them to start further investigation on the cause of the burn. Saru, however, explains to Michael that as Discovery is on standby to jump into a possible battle situation with the Emerald Chain, that they cannot depart to rescue Book. So rather than follow the orders of her captain, what does Burnham do? She enlists the help of Discovery's favourite bad girl, Giorgio, goes rogue, takes the Nautilus, and heads off to rescue Book, leaving Grudge on Discovery to watch over Tilly. And from there on in, the episode is fairly predictable. They find Book, organise a breakout to rescue him and the slave workers from Osira's nephew, then flee back to Starfleet headquarters. As much as I didn't get gripped by this, there are a few interesting things that come to light throughout the A-plot. First, we know for definite that Osira is Orion, as we meet her nephew. Second... Giorgio refers to the dilithium that she has as real dilithium. Does this mean that the rest of the dilithium people have been using is synthetic? The Orion also seems very excited by this news of her having real dilithium. And could this also be connected with the burn? Perhaps the dilithium reserves across the galaxy running low meant that someone was experimenting with synthetic substitutes and something went horribly wrong. And third, whilst we're talking about Giorgio, we get to see what it was that was bothering her at the end of the last episode, or at least flashbacks of it. 
in which we see Giorgio hovering over a dead body, clearly distressed. And she calls out, no, no, that's going to be for another theory video later this week. So I'm going to say now that personally, I thought this was one of the weaker episodes of the season so far. I'm not saying it's bad, but there are a few things I thought could have been done better. Uh, for a start, how did Book's ship find Michael? They made a big thing over the first four episodes about finding Starfleet slash Federation headquarters, and yet Book puts his ship on autopilot and it flies straight there. I also thought the scene with the scrapyard, when the Bajoran slave is forced to run into the perimeter fence, didn't need to actually show his head exploding. I think if the camera had just panned up, so it was just out of shot, it would have given the same effect, and let's face it, we knew what was coming, so there was no real need to show it. As I've already mentioned, I'm not overly convinced by the redesign of Discovery, but time will tell on that one, and I look forward to seeing what difference it makes. Still not too happy with the Dash A registry though. But there are also things about the episode that I did like. Firstly, I think Doug Jones once again absolutely nailed playing Saru brilliantly in this episode, and we got to see more of the journey that he is on, not only with his new role as captain, but also his longing for familiarity. And you can see that Saru really does believe in the chain of command, both from his interactions with Admiral Vance, but also with Burnham when he demotes her at the end of the episode. You can tell that Saru is hugely disappointed in Michael for her actions, and probably in himself for making this error in judgement by promoting her in the first place. But we're starting to see that Saru is not comfortable in this new era. His choice to make Burnham his first officer was out of a desire to return to something more familiar, and I think that as much as he truly believes in the ideals of the Federation and Starfleet, this Federation is unrecognisable to him, and he feels lost. I do like the bond that's forming between him and Tilly, though, and I think the conversation that he has with her in engineering shows that despite what he's trying to deal with, he still has a feel for the crew of his ship. But as pointed out in the conversation with Admiral Vance at the end of the episode, Vance needs to know that he can trust Saru's judgement, and at the moment, I'm not even sure Saru completely trusts Saru's judgement. And one thing that did pop into my head on this scene was when Vance was explaining to him that had he been given Burnham's information, he might have considered the risk worth it. And if you're as big a Trekkie as me, this is probably what popped into your head right there and then. Risk is part of the game, you want to sit in that chair. And as for Vance, he got one of the best lines in the whole episode. Permission to speak. You know to be the best thing I've ever heard. Now, one of the other things I liked about this episode was the relationship we see starting to form between Stamets and Adira. It's an extension of what started in episode three, but we start to get a little more now. Stamets initially walks into the lab annoyed that everything is changing and nothing is where it should be, but Adira soon calms him down by pointing out the upgrades that she's made to the spore drive for him, which will make it more comfortable for him to use. And later on in the mess hall, we get a touching little scene where Adira opens up to Stamets about Grey after he spots her apparently talking to herself. And this is because, as he explains to Hugh in a later scene, he can relate to what she's going through with not wanting to let go of someone she loves after his experience with Dr. Culber. And this helps further build the trust between the two characters. And the way it plays out in such a light-hearted and almost comical way, I think is gonna continue and help build their relationship further. I suspect to the point where Stamets and Culber basically become her adopted parents. Because let's not forget, Adira's also an orphan. Last thing on my hit list is that conversation between Saru and Tilly. As I said, I like the bond forming between them, and as much as some people might moan that the captain wouldn't confide in an ensign the way Saru does, but think about their history. 
Saru has been mentoring Tilly since season one in the command training program. And I think it's fair to say that certainly in this season, it's starting to pay off. In episode four, she comes to Saru after the disastrous dinner and offers him some words of reassurance about his actions. And now she's showing that she's capable of making good command decisions when she tells Saru that he must talk to Admiral Vance about Burnham going rogue to prevent the whole crew of Discovery being tarred with the same brush. Her character's starting to grow and it's going to be fun to watch where it goes. So overall, I think this episode has some weaknesses, but I also think it's got some good strengths too. It felt to me that the episode's B-plots, where we're seeing more character building, outshone the A-plot, which was to retrieve the Starship's black box. And as much as this didn't really push the season's story arc along much, I love the way the writers this season really do seem to have listened to the feedback from the fans, who wanted to see more from the rest of the crew. But all in all... It's not an episode I can see myself going back to many times. So we're going to give Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 6, a Warp Factor rating of 7. Well, thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed the review. And if you did, please smash that like button for us. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the episode and on the season so far. So drop those in the comments below and let's discuss. As I mentioned... There's going to be a couple more videos this week linking off from this episode, so please make sure you subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications so that you find out when they go live. And until next time, set a course for Starfleet Command, Warp 7, engage.